morning, everyone. Morning. Um, my name is Corinne Pacey. Um, I work for Literacy Volunteers of Greater New Haven, but I am the Valley Regional Literacy Coordinator. So, Literacy Volunteers, we are in the Greater New Haven area, Meriden, Wallingford, and the Valley. And for I'm the again the sole um, coordinator for the for the area. And the Valley, we mainly focus on um, Shelton, Seymour, Antonia, and Derby. Hoping to um, we would love to expand, but that will be in later years. Um, oh, hold on! I was very excited by seeing that graphic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> love a good PowerPoint. <laughs> Okay, so um, talk a little, I would, and I'm very appreciative of being able to come today. I mean, I just love talking um, about our program, but in doing the education segment, I one it gave me an opportunity to do something a little bit different than my normal spiel, you know. And I mean, I'll get into a little bit of like who we are, what we do, all that stuff. But I wanted to kind of focus on more about our our students um it's i've been with literacy volunteers since october um it has been a incredible learning opportunity too and just um i learned a lot in terms of um the, the different needs and how much our nonprofit we're nonprofit federal and C3 um, serves communities that might not otherwise get served. And I think that that is, that for me is one of the most heartwarming things of the work that we do, besides the main work we do. So. Okay. Um, so just a little bit about Literacy Volunteers mission and vision. Um, our mission, we foster, or basically, um, my role and what we mainly do is provide free literacy classes to adults in the Valley, in, in the Valley region. Um, these, are, when I say adults, 18 and over, or you could be 17 as long as you are not enrolled in high school. Those are the, the two criteria. Um, our classes, our two main classes, or types of classes are basic literacy, and English for Speakers of Another Language, which I'll just get into a little bit more later. Um, our classes are taught by trained volunteer tutors. So our tutors are the ones that basically make up the huge backbone of what we what we get to do, or what we do. Um, for our basic literacy, literacy classes, we tend those tend to be a one-to-one -one setting, um, just because the needs of our students are such that it would be kind of, it would be, very taxing on the students and the tutor to share their their time with you know both both students. Um, English for speakers of the other language classes can be up to about four to six people because those are more conversational based. I try to place students that are at this about the same um, English proficiency level, so that has a little bit more more flexibility. Um, so you know, so again. Talk about the adult learner, tutors, um, so and community. So all fostering partnerships with all those to enable individuals and families to achieve educational, career, and quality of life goals through improved literacy skills. And for our vision, we envision a future in which the power of literacy skills enables all adults to thrive in their community. Um, little bit, very, very little about how I arrived at Literacy Volunteers. Um, I graduated from Gettysburg College with a major, or I created my own major focused on education policy and minor in education studies. So I've always been education focused, thought I kind of want to go into to policy. Um, did, came back home after um, college and did some more kind of, um, more of the grassroots kind of focus, working some a few school systems, did a year with AmeriCorps um, VISTA, working with the city of New Haven um, over under their, um, it was their city transformation plan. So I was responsible for helping out with the early childhood uh, platform of that. Um, but I would say, honestly, this definition is just of literacy is just what drives me in, <clears throat> excuse me, not even just being here, but in all 
in just my work and what I believe in. So literacy is the ability to read, write, speak, and listen in a way that lets us communicate effectively and make sense of the world. So those last two parts, communicate effectively and make sense of the world, I think is everything. There are a variety of ways in which you can do that, but those, I think those are the skills, those are those abilities, I think are just what is so special about being human and um, and just makes the world go round that any any way that I can be a part of helping others feel more of a sense of accomplishment in those areas is just it's everything to me. So um, okay. So yeah. So who who are achieving these goals? Who are these people that are thriving that we're talking about? What are their communities? Um, just a little bit of kind of larger scope about the valley at large. And, you know, like, well, Karen, why are these services needed? Um, so this is just grabbing some census data from our, from our strategic, or our most recent strategic plan. So this is around 2018. So not, not too far off data-wise, but over 9,000 valley residents that are 18 and over did not have um, a high school degree. And over 13,000 residents have immigrated from another country. So, yeah, you have that. And I would say that our, the students that we work with, um, the story is just even more complicated than that, or complex, but also I think more beautiful because, so you think of, you know, an adult ed um, and, Again, anything that I'm saying is not bashing, you know, I'm just talking about the difference, you know, they do amazing work too. I'm just kind of, um, again, I'm excited to use this as to kind of talk more about the, the specifics of who we get to work with, which is different than an adult ed program. You know, they, their folk, they, you usually think of, you know, GED classes, you think of ESOL, and, um, you know, certainly perhaps, you know, that, actually, that kind of stuff, but, um, I would say even with going back and talking about our goals um, or, you know, the, the goals and thriving, I think there's a certain notion that we have, oh, well, you know, someone's learning to, to read and then to read to do what? To get me to get their high school diploma or to get a better job. There's the, you know, the financial component to, which is, Certainly important, but again, what I've found um, with the students that we've been getting is that that mold doesn't always um, doesn't always work for them. And I think, especially in this culture, this time now, where a lot of people are really trying to are self reflecting and reflecting on diversity, equity, and inclusion, which I'm all all about. I think it is due time to kind of high or you know bring this to the, the table and talk about, you know, like, just thinking about society in general, like, when, how we fit into um, a mold that might be outside your, your current norm. So, and that's why I was saying their, uh, what, what are their communities? Because we can think of communities in a variety of ways. Um, and it, these, just are just communities that we, you know, I certainly have not always thought about, and um, that I think, you know, just kind of opens our all, all our minds a little bit more. So um, I talked about basic literacy. So this could go. Um, our classes can span in terms of the student type of students that we get. Could span from a student who went through the school system, you know, graduated, you no, know, you know, basically slipped through the cracks. Never learn to read. Yeah, it's it is mind boggling that that can um, can happen, and it, but it does. And you know, we there's you know, it wasn't like, and they say slipped through. You know, it wasn't that they were um, maybe got even like you know tested or diagnosed. You know, for something that kind of thing. It's just you just didn't. Um, so we and 
So we're starting with basic. We're talking starting with phonics. We're starting with you know the matching the letter the the sounds to the the letters and um, I mean I for the sake of the student or students I'm thinking of I want to respect their privacy but they just for starting with us they have sword and uh, I, it's phenomenal. It's it's really yeah. It's really, I'll get more into the achievement parts after, but you know I, I would love to talk about that. But you know as we also there's you know the stigma with you know. And, I think another thing that's incredible is how well people can get around hiding certain things, you know, and getting by. And those are skills in themselves to still be, you know, just because you might, I mean, yes, your life is so much harder when you don't know how to read, but one, to still get a, a by and to not let anyone know that that's going on in your life, that's just, you know, it's, Amazing. Um, so again, so that's just the one end. We also work with um, a lot of adults who went through the school system, probably with uh, through their special education program. Um, the and these are adults that would not be have that they do not have any other um, way. There's there's not really I there's not really a lot of um, other supports out there for adults with disabilities and i'm also speaking of this slightly anecdotally from my twin sister she you know we're um we're 29 so she's been out of the school system for a little bit of time she was able to stay until she was 22 and then you know coming out the options are adult day programs if you know there you meet this certain criteria um it's we'll get into that or they're really just trying to push people into the just, just working um, with her, for instance, you know, she might have that ability to work, but she would need like a job coach with her all the time um, or like staying at home. And, you know, then these are adults that are a little bit older and don't want to get into their, um, you know, their necessarily their backstories. There's a for privacy safety. There's a variety, variety of students. Um, and you know they're practicing they're they're just it's a way for them to keep up with with reading skills with um with math skills they you know have a variety of goals that they want to do there's um you know one one of my students or our students she talks about how she goes to school, it's her school each week she's going to school um and they, it's just this um you know, where I, and then I was talking about that echelon of you know the getting the, the degree. I mean, these are students that have you know gotten their you know high school degrees, but just because they might not be able to contribute the same way in the economic workforce does not mean that you know what they want or what they're getting out of our or out of reading programs or is any less valuable than what anyone else wants to do. Um, and lastly, so we, um, I was kind of talking about our one end of the spectrum, our other end where we're um, the, the highest end of students that we would work with. Um, so I work out of the American Job Center in Germany. We have a partnership with them that if there are students that might be looking to enroll in a GED program, but they're just not quite at the score level for that yet, or they need to take a job placement type of test you know to they're in this program they're wanting to uh, um again but there's like a certain test that they need to to take whatnot um they but you know maybe their math is still a little shaky or it's been a while since they've been in school and you know needing kind of help with with that uh, we have a referral process with them where they can um work with our our tutors for uh, help in that and um, we're also starting this fall more so hopefully we're looking to um i think the ansonia program is looking to um, really expand their youth career program and that's for students out of school students 16 to 24 um who kind of need some or are looking for guidance in terms of their educational or workforce goals and we can kind of be like a um help with with them too okay. um then on the other side english for speakers of other languages wide range 
we have we work with students who maybe know a word of English or a few words, you know, they have family that can help translate for them um, to those that were anesthesiologists in their country or their, you know, their home country and are very, you know, proficient, but want to just increase their, um, you know, their increase their what they feel like their fluency. They are very self conscious or they can feel very self conscious about, oh, I have this accent or, oh, I miss trip off this word or that word, or, you know, I just want to feel more comfortable in my English. Um, and so I, a thing I'll say again about the, um, with a lot of ESOL um, classes in um, the adult ed program, which is what is phenomenal is that most of the, the class or the classes are held multiple times a week. I will say with us, usually our students meet with us once a week for an hour and a half to two hours. We are trying to kind of, now that we're kind of phasing out of COVID a little bit, we are trying to like bump that up so that they can get four hours um, a week if possible. But there are a variety of factors which make it so that um, it might be hard for them to attend um, an adult ed program five days a week or even you know two days a week for however, um, you know, two to three hours, whatnot. Um, lack of childcare. Kid is is a big one. I mean, if you're stuck at home with your kid, I mean, we still um, we're moved mostly back to in person, but we do still have the Zoom component, and that's been you know godsend for some people who you know. I mean, I don't. I'm sure you guys all have anecdotal stories about the the horrors that could be childcare, trying to secure childcare or whatnot. Um, you know, so you can't even get to you know, anywhere, mostly, let alone in an adult ed class for three hours. Um, some of our students are balancing it out with, with work, um, you know, maybe working one or two jobs, or they're working, you know, most most days of the week, or they're fitting it in. They have, you know, maybe a, a full-time, they have a, you know, consultancy-type job, um, you know, for back home that they can do online. So their schedule is a little flexible, but to do the other, you know, it's still full. They can't commit as as much of their their time. Um, students are saying, you know, not only students that do not really know English, but you do not have, um, come, you know, we're, we're raised with a formalized education. Um, I think, again, I think adult ed does handle some of that, but, you know, we're, at least with our program, you know, we're focused on really growing our pre-literacy curriculum, you know, so these are students that never learned to read in their native language, let alone, or, you know, English, and um, there's a lot of games and hand gestures, and, you know, just a lot, you focus more on the oral component of it before you get to even trying to attempt to look at the written word. Um, some people are limited in traveling or driving or their comfortability. Like there are some students that can't, that don't drive. Some students that, you know, um, won't drive out of, they'll feel comfortable driving out of their town. And especially, you know, if their, the, their adult ed program is not in that town, like they're just stuck, they're stuck. Um, and another, th another thing I'll say is, you know, while adult ed tends to, follow a typical kind of school schedule, we have um, rolling student admission. So, you know, even if we're in like summer right now, I already, so far this, you know, from July 1st, I already have five potentially new students, you know, that I have to meet with pre-test, um, place, all that kind of stuff. And again, and, and the, the merits, of course, of, you know, an adult ed program, is you know that you're in class you're in class more you're going to pick up the language more it's you know it is wonderful in that way um it just we're just talking again about you know typical models and not we're just kind of the i would say that more of an atypical model of providing services for people that you know for multiple reasons just can't you know attend the school in that in that traditional way okay so just highlighting some student achievements from this past year. Um, and for our American Job Center students, we had one 
that you know completed um, one of our one of the programs that we use is an online program called Lexia, um, and she completed the whole thing. And that doing that brought her up to a level in which she was ready to move on to an adult ed GED prep course. Um, another you know student who had been working with us a, a lot, um, you know, was able to attain the employment. Um, many showed gains in what are called education functioning levels. Um, just I won't get into the, the real boring semantics of that, but just think of it, you know, you have maybe move from like a lower low intermediate to a high intermediate. That's that kind of stuff. That's one of the metrics that we use to show um, success. And then for our Valley students, um, I was able to survey 10 out of 18 of them at the end of the year for when I was doing their post-testing. So just a couple of highlights. So 10, for 10 of those students, eight of them marked that they had improved their basic English skills. And this was including our English language learners and our basic literacy learners. All 10 said that they felt more confident. Um, eight said that they feel that, that they can speak more freely. And seven were saying that they felt that they understood more when they were spoken to and have used more words and increased vocabulary. And then some other achievements that I wanted to um, kind of you know, highlight were one student like learned to, to sign their name when you know our students that again didn't have the formalized education. One received her US passport after um, attaining her citizenship last year on the first try, might mm -hmm. I say. So like she and her tutor are rock stars. Um, you know, people talk about making new friends, reading and writing more, and you know. Um, we also have a lot of parents um, as students, and so saying that they definitely had more increased involvement in their children's schooling. Okay, so this is so what I wanted to show here. It's one thing. I mean, it was one thing for me to talk about this, and I think I've given you guys a decent or kind of a good picture of um, or you know anecdotes of our students, but to see it in real like. To, to see the actual students and hear them um, reading is a whole other thing. So this is a video that someone had taken from our end of year, the New Haven 2019 end of year celebration. It's like a two minute video. Um, if, you know, if we can't watch it, then it, I don't want to spend too much time or maybe save that for the end. But basically um, we do this, um, this is one of our projects. To each year. Um, it's called Hear Our Voices, and students are um, asked to submit or to write pieces. It could be pretty much about, I mean, there are certain questions that they can work off of, um, or they can write about anything that they want. Um, and then some of those students are then selected to read these pieces um, at our end of year celebration. So for this year, I had five students that wrote pieces. Um, all five were, were showcased, whether it was, you know, that they could come themselves or their tutors read on their behalf. Um, and we, our celebration was at the Derby Library, um, up in there in um, their meeting room. It was really, really nice event. I mean, and this was the first time in person since 2019 that we've been, we were able to do. So, um, so again, I would highly, highly recommend looking at this the video. Um, it, it is just truly heartwarming. And then on the, in the very back is just some tutor um, anecdotes about why they do, you know, what they do. And I, I wrote something about why I, I do what I do. Um, you can send, send us the um, link, and I could share it with the, with the group. Send the link. Yeah, yeah you got it. Sure it okay. So then. Is any other reason that uh, you know I'm here is how like I've shared this education stuff with you, but you know, maybe you have become inspired now that you want to be a partner in liter literacy with us. And how can you do that? Well, here are some ways. Um, if you could, we are always, always looking for volunteers. As I said, they are the part of the main backbone of our organization. We could not run these classes without them. Um, we our requirements, or we ask that you can commit for a year to for tutoring. We provide training, and that takes about a month or so before 
we'd be ready to work with a student. Uh, we'd meet with the student once, um, at least once a week for an hour and a half to, to two hours. Um, we do more great. Um, but yeah, we're also for our, oh, that's another thing. So um, I was talking again, I've been talking more about the reading side of it, but we do also um, offer some math tutoring. I think I kind of mentioned that a little bit before with the job center, but if anyone is just kind of like, oh, I don't know if I feel comfortable with reading, but you know, I'm good at math and I can tutor at that. We're looking for that. So, you know, um, so you don't need any experience. I mean, you don't have oh, to yeah. have, I mean, what Great I, question. I, yeah. I don't have to be an English major. Nope. Nope. You don't have to have ever taught. You just have to be able to know how to read, write, and speak English. Right. And, you know, for the ESOL side, you don't have to know another language. It's, you know, the class are taught in English. So but you're committing one on one to this with this student you, as a volunteer, one on one for a year. Yes. It's as a commitment. Oh, totally. And our program, we are looking to kind of diversify our, our programming a bit more. Like this is a, um, again, a program wide thing. So I can't, you know, there's a lot of moving parts to it, but we are looking to offer some kind of more like shorter. You know, shorter classes, maybe like a four week financial literacy type class or health literacy. So if like you're interested, but you're like, okay, a month or a year is, you know, a little too long, but maybe I can commit this bit of time. Awesome. And yeah. And we'll all have to be more details on that. And I, I assume that if you can speak multiple languages, you're even more valuable. Oh, we will try to, yeah, snatch you in a heartbeat. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, another thing that's super helpful, publicizing, like spreading the word about us. I mean, I'm the first full-time coordinator for this position. We, the Valley program has been around for about a decade, but publicity was always a little, has been a bit of a, um, yeah, challenge just it, it, because as in terms of uh, time commitment, because of some, you know, the, the, I mean, part of my job is to do publicity stuff, but that's because they added it on as for as part of the full time position. The a part time person was basically only you know able to focus on managing you know the the students and the and whatnot. So, but you know it's a group effort. So if there's and you know anyone or just you know shout out from the rooftops or whatnot, I have some more some publicity type stuff there too that I can circulate or that you can take to help circulate. Absolutely. So, um, and then donating is another another one. You know, we a lot a lot of our um, funds come from from grants, come from you know in person or donations, um, fundraising, that kind of stuff. Um, the background that I chose was actually from the Derby American Legion was uh, kind enough to to give us a two hundred fifty dollar um, donation. And they use we use that to buy um, tutor resource books. So I taken a photo of it. And I was like, thank you. So I just <laughs> use that as like the background um, of it. And there's again different kinds um, tribute gifts, workplace giving, in kind again or in kind donations. We have uh, had others that are like, yeah, I don't want to give money, but like you know, if you have this list of books that you know you need. So did you, did I miss it? You said there's no charge for students. Correct. Okay. No charge for students. Or we are still looking um, for, for board members, just shooting that out there. Right now, I think there is one spot that has yet to be filled, and then they're anticipating an opening in the fall. So I have, you know, description materials about that. And being a board member. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So again, if you know anyone that's like, looking to be on a board, or if you're looking to be on a board, then, um, and they're always, you know, you can submit, um, that's, they're always kind of taking in info about that. Maybe there won't be a spot at the time, but like they, it's good to know that there are people that would be, be interested, so. I will now, yeah. So, so, how, so how, would you, how, would, how would you approach someone who, without making them feel, um, um, I don't know, inferior on why don't you, I, like I could be out here talking to these guys who are working on the, my bathroom. Sure. You know, I, I could, I mean, I'm asking them the question and they have to turn to someone else because they can't answer me. And how do I approach them um, and say, hey, 
you can't speak to me, so maybe you should go take if there's an opportunity. Yeah, well, I would that is such a great question, and I always do it from a sense of compassion. Yeah, and maybe this could be helpful to you, not you know, um, oh yeah. oh, oh you need this, right? But, right. You know, so more of a you know, this could be helpful to you. I just learned about it. Exactly. <laughs> I just yeah. learned about this organization in Derby. This could be helpful to you. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.